gangsters, time to hop back on the Movieverse review horse with a swift squint at the Studio series. Now this motley gathering of all new ultra faithful Bayformer figures is seemingly an attempt to bring their distinctive brand of exhausting sensory brutality right off the screen and onto your shelf in high grade hyped up plastic perfection. Because yes, we're apparently all so old now that it's time for a sort of Generations revival of the Transformers from the live action movies, which you'd think would seem mad to someone like me, a bearded man baby from the 80s who bums G1 all day long. But honestly, it makes total sense. I mean, like them or not, the movies have been around for 11 years and made multiple shit zillions of dollars. There's like a whole generation of fans who grew up with them and for whom these characters are, the Transformers. So, you know, go off. But I would appreciate it if we could ease off on the whole ceaseless procession of age thing. Just for a bit, you're bumming everybody out. So our studio series subject today is Husky Autobot weapon lad Ironhide, who remained oddly likeable throughout his three movie appearances with his indefinable accent and awkwardly uncool quips. He's leaked lubricants all over my foot. Why do I like him again? And he certainly had a spotty run with his toys. Like, it was kind of bone from the start with his weird ass overdeveloped design and oddly positioned arms, which has sadly led to a lot of sort of good but ultimately pretty unsatisfying figures. And this one's even dropped at a particularly weird time, because we know they're working on a masterpiece. Like, they've announced it, we've seen it, we know. So why even would you? But they have, so let's. Yes indeed, this is Studio Series Ironhide, looking, as he's intended to, like Ironhide. I mean, as the ugly lumpy one of an already ugly lumpy crew, any figure of Ironhide's always going to be kind of inherently inelegant. But this is definitely the slickest Mr. Hyde's ever looked. It represents him extraordinarily well as a jagged metal junkyard mutant migraine creature with like six discernible car parts hanging off it. But he's actually a surprisingly satisfying package. Like, yes, he's ugly, but he doesn't hurt to look at. Now, this is a Voyager class figure, whatever that means anymore. Like, seeing as how the whole studio thing's based around maximum screen accuracy, it's just slightly weird to me that he's in the same scale strata as like Megatron, Optimus, Brawl, and Starscream, all of whom are canonically absolute units. But look, man, do what you want. I'm sure they've done their homework. Voyager clearly doesn't just mean a slightly big one anymore. It's a price point, and it's fine. Moving on. So let's get into it, and we'll obviously begin with his weird ass top heavy ass bod boulder with its peculiar V-shaped cleavage, V-vidge, which for some reason comes mistransformed right out of the box, so just pop his head up, tab them puppies in, and gimme five. Anyway, I don't know about you, but I've always found these shoulder mounds a touch uncomfortable, but at least they look pretty solid here. Like it's clean, it's logical, and it seems to form a kind of troll face. Definitely feeling these dummy wheels, and while there is quite a lot going on, it all sort of generally snuggles up for a nice cozy smush fest. Heads a fairly fab rendering of his stupid smashed pug face with its big dumb nose and luscious blue eyes. The neck can be a bit of a tricky bitch though, like it's got this stalk plugged into it from the front which loves to pop out and leave a big ugly empty larynx hole. Arms are pretty small and stumpy but come on that was always gonna happen. They're at least pretty poseable though and they flex around the front with a fair degree of freedom and they certainly bulk out once you get the weapons on the go. Check them out there with all those notorious moving parts all present and correct. I'll be a completely static and in like blankets silver and grey with all weird car door shards hanging off them for some reason. Much like the figure as a whole, the legs are definitely a game of two halves. Like the thighs are just a chunky crystalline detail gasm and knees down it's all spikes and panels. To be fair he wears it well, but these big sprawling feet are a smidge clumsy. They could totally have used a sideways ankle tilt, but they do at least have a bonus animated bumblebee roller skate mode. I do sort of feel like the paint could be doing more work. I mean he's got it where it counts, like the face face looks gnarly and he does look swish overall. But because the motor belly's all just default black, it makes the bumper stick out like mad and sort of split the poor sod in half. A bit like if the photographer guy from The Omen had caught a snap of jazz. Too soon? So yeah, overall he's a fairly glorious gun-having geezer. It just all makes sense and feels good. And do you know how welcome it is to not have any gimmicks to grapple with? I just know I'm not gonna have to worry about it pulling any stupid spring-loaded shit. There's no needless automorph or mecha live or stupid Broingy weapons to compromise the loveliness. It's just a straight ahead, no bullshit, good quality action figure. And isn't that so refreshing? So for gimmicks, we've instead to head back into the box and check out some cardboard. Yes, indeed, the studio figures all come with a little pack in diorama dealy. And Ironhide's one comes from that city battle when he did a hella sick slow motion over bimbo front flip and kept telling Sam to get to the building. Sam, get to the building. Sam, get to the building. Or I guess it could be literally any given frame from Dark. Dark of the Moon. Guess at least it's not his death scene. Now, Ironhide's 
transformations have always been a bit of a confusing drag, but this one's definitely the least pain in the ass. Like, it's relatively logical and kerfuffle-free, everything fits, everything's got adequate clearance, nothing falls off. Plus, it's memorable, so I don't feel like I'm gonna forget where everything goes and end up hating it, which does happen. So as ever, Movie Mode Iron Pants turns into a beautifully rendered GMC top kick. A vehicle so bruisingly massive it's presumably used only by the military and the deeply insecure. But to us clueless non-motorists, it's basically a big meaty slab of ugly muscle with a front end that looks like a depressed Gila monster. So Ironhide. And as an alt mode, it's mostly a pretty slick affair. It all crumples down and packs in beautifully, rolls well enough, and generally looks roughly 90% perf. This is roomy. And it'd all be lovely, tasty, beefy gravy if not for a few bewildering design blunders. Like, look at that gruesomely graceless flatbed gap, as well as a touch of unsightly dangle foot and an extremely obvious but forgivably charming case of ex brawn head. Anyway, I certainly appreciate the effectively efficient paint job. Like, all the details are picked out extremely tidily from this beautiful blank in a black dynamite. Even the wheels are left boringly blank for realism. Wheelism. Weapon storage is strangely overt, though. Like, they just bash together and then bash on there, which... Okay. And that's sort of him all over, really. I mean, it's like 90% lush, beefy perfection and the rest sort of oddly rushed and roughshod. But if nothing else, he absolutely bodies all the other Ironhide toys. Packing all the cool-ass tough guy charm and frustrating physical quirks that make Ironhide the begrudgingly affable dunce we all love slash tolerate. Plus, it's so natural to pose and transform that it doesn't give me the same kind of dread that so frequently turns me off my movie figures. So if this is what the Studio Series is all about, then count me firmly on board. And ultimately, if what you're after is a good-ass Ironhide figure without a six-month wait and a hundred-dollar invoice, then he do be Firenhide. Goodbye, Ironhide. <laughs>